Continuing with the theme of ancient civilizations, we are heading all the way now over to China. Yup, from magic mirrors to mysterious beauty remedies, today's list is a, is a good time. It's pretty wild, I'm not gonna lie. Let's count down our list of top 10 mysterious things that people did in ancient China. I'm your host, Rachel Fisher. <laughs> and I'm Taylor McWaters, and without further ado, let's get going. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Zanzwingdui Runes. These runes located in China's southwest province may just provide archaeologists clues on their past. Very recently, this past year as a matter of fact, new artifacts were found, a total of 534 relics. These cultural staples made of bronze, gold, ivory, a couple of these relics have been turning heads and raising eyebrows. This 3,000 year old bronze figure, for example, seems to be holding an ancient wine vessel. And this relic stands a little over one meter. These runes were luckily discovered during a a refurbishment of a primary school, the Sichuan Provincial Cultural Relics and Archaeology Research Institute found over 80 tombs, 60 ash pits, and 10 building zones, all of them dating back to the Western Zhou Dynasty, so back around 770 BC. Researchers have been examining the site for a couple years now, and although the people of Shu left little to no detail on their culture, we're finding all these artifacts that tell us a story, like for example the one pound gold mask found in one of the six sacrificial pits. So we're getting there one beautiful relic at a time. Number nine, seahorses. Ancient Chinese medicine was kind of incredible. Honestly, they had like a kind of sixth sense when it came to how certain things might work. Some of them were pretty questionable, I will say, I'm, I will not lie, but they had something right about seahorses. Even today, you can find seahorses at markets as a street snack, but beyond a tasty treat, they have been used as a part of Chinese medicine since time immemorial. It was believed that they had the potential to cure infertility, baldness, asthma, and arthritis. Research work on seahorses provided information that has the ability to help ease inflammatory symptoms associated with arthritis. A peptide derived from the seahorse species, Hippocampus cuda, proved to be effective towards chondrocyte cells. So they were kind of right. It did do something. Number eight, magic mirrors. Because of horror movies, it's hard for me to open and close a bathroom mirror. I can't do it. They always do it so slow in the movies as well. I'm like, oh, just slam it. But in ancient China, mirrors were considered a good omen, actually. So much so that after a loved one passed, a mirror was often hung on the ceiling of the burial chambers, you know, to prevent evil spirits from ruining your beauty sleep. If you encountered an evil spirit, the first place you would have to go is near one of these ancient mirrors. So when archaeologists found these 2,000 year old ancient artifacts, one of these mirrors was still able to reflect images. The world's strongest Windex, there we go. We found more than 80 of these, so it's quite important back in the day. Inscriptions were also left on these mirrors as well, like family wealth, eternal joy, anything to preserve their memory. I would much rather have a giant mirror than a tombstone after I pass away, but it's gotta be a funhouse mirror, because any other mirror is uh, scary. And also, I can't get my hands on these ones. They're a little bit, they're slim pickings, only 80 of these. Number seven, John Wen. This kind of gives off Anastasia vibes a little. A prince thought to be alive after he was destroyed in a fire. Mm. In 1402, the main capital of Nanjing, a fire was smoldering beneath political strife. The capital was invaded by the emperor's own uncle, Zhu Di. He later accused his own nephew of being corrupted and lying to the people. Finally, the storm that had been brewing for years erupted. A rebellion was launched by his uncle with the aim of getting rid of the emperor's ministers and for Di to take power. He destroyed the palace by fire while the emperor was still inside. Three bodies were recovered from the wreckage, assumed to be the bodies of Jian Wen, his Empress and their eldest son. His uncle soon declared himself emperor, but the people believed that John Wen had escaped. Rumors that he smuggled out just in time and was living as a monk somewhere else in China circulated. His uncle tried to erase any trace of his legacy, but the people remembered, just kind of like Anastasia. Yeah. Number six, ancient seismograph. Zhang Heng, a Chinese astronomer and a mathematician born in 78 AD, created the world's first seismoscope in 132 AD. And it's absolutely weirdly gorgeous. I mean, look at this thing. So what would happen was, Heng figured this out, that when an earthquake hit, this pendulum inside the urn would move, as do most things during an earthquake. And in turn, when it picked up vibrations, it dropped a ball out of the mouth of the ancient metal dragon. The ball then falls into one of the mouths of a metal frog, making a beautiful but concerning clang sound. Now apparently the first time this happened, nobody even felt a thing, but days later, when a messenger finally arrived, it was then told that an earthquake did in fact happen. This type of ancient knowledge blows my mind. Like this guy changed the world. Not too mysterious per se, but rather impressive how he was able to figure this out. Number five, feet binding. Beauty is pain, am I right? <laughs> Oh no. We humans spend a lot of time trying to be attractive for one another, and in ancient China, tiny feet. 
they were awesome. The tinier the feet, the more attractive they were. With bound feet, a woman's beauty was enhanced. Some were even bound to be 10 centimeters in size. So small. It was also a status symbol because the rich didn't need to work. Because as you can guess, having deformed feet prevented women from being able to leave the house. So if you were poor, you didn't bind your feet. It was a painful process. They would soak the feet in warm water mixed with herbs and animal blood. Then they would curl the toes over the sole of the foot and wrap it in cloth, breaking the toes and the arches so that it could be as small as possible. Oof. It wasn't until 1912 that it was actually banned. Number four. The number four. Literally. Some numbers are quite lucky when it comes to Chinese culture. The number eight, for example, if you had an apartment on the eighth floor, it would sell for a higher price than that of the seventh. And no, it's not because seven, eight, nine, but rather because the number eight is pronounced ba, which sounds familiar to fa, as in fakai, which translates to becoming rich or well off. The 2008 Beijing Olympics kicked off on August 8th at 8.08 p.m., eight seconds in. It's a big deal still to this day, but the number four, on the other hand, over here is even more unlucky than the number 13. It's bad juju, the number four. It actually causes traffic to this day in Beijing. Let me explain. The number four sounds a lot like the word death, so buildings don't have this number as a floor even. It goes two, three, five. Although if you're on floor five, you know what's up. The traffic problem though, that's when it gets intense. See, Beijing has a vehicle plate program set in order to maintain the flow of traffic and also to help out with pollution. Depending on which numbers end in your plate, so on weekdays, private cars with plates ending in two digits, zero to nine, are not allowed to drive in Beijing's fifth ring road all day. So if your number is on a certain day, you need to find another route to work. Makes sense. So the lucky numbers are used more often, which means more traffic on those days, but if you had a plate ending in four, that's just 2% of all cars. You're flying to work. You're laughing on the way to work. It's easy. You're there in two minutes. Number three, terracotta warriors. Shin Shi Huang, who lived around 259 to 210 BCE, was not only an infamous conqueror in life, but he desired to be the same in death. He wanted to be immortalized, so he decided to build himself an immaculate tomb. It was basically an underground city guarded by the famous life-size terracotta warriors. But not only that, it was complete with gardens, stables, horses, bronze, ritual vessels, jewelry, and he heaps of treasure. This immaculate piece of art represented many of the ways in which the first emperor left an impression on his civilization. During his reign, he introduced standardized currency, writing, mathematical measurements, and plenty more. He was a military genius, though his methods were basically massacres. He was credited for unifying states together. But his underground city of immortality remains one of his most mysterious footprints he left, making sure the world never forgot him even thousands of years later. Number two. You're in trouble. We've done lists now on numerous ancient cultures, and the way that they use their natural gift of water, you know, varies. Romans would use their urine to wash their clothes, ancient Egyptians would pee on barley to predict a newborn sex, in ancient China, over 150 gallons of urine was often collected in this giant pan and then it was boiled until it evaporated. The result was something called autumn mineral, this crystallized urine residue that's later given to patients to consume. Yummy. Urine eggs were also a thing, that's when you boil an egg for an entire day in the not so mellow yellow. When it came down to smelling good in ancient China, the wealthy would wear scented bags, but if you weren't well off, you had to wash up with urine, just as the Romans did. And last but not least, the lake of wine. A lake of wine? Sign me up! I'm in. I'm diving in. I prefer the grape variety just like King Zhou. It's tough to be a king, but he was resolved to make sure he had a damn good time. He must have loved the OG charcuterie boards because this dude ordered the construction of a pool of wine and a forest of meat. What? A pool of wine, I can imagine. A forest of meat? No idea. The pool was massive, big enough to fit several canoes. In the middle of the pool was a little island with a tree made out of skewers of meat. Creative. Uh, Zhao and his concubines would pass the time floating around the pool of wine, plucking off meat and living their best life. Sounds awesome. Honestly, I'd be in. However, his decadence didn't really please his people. Um, kind of like a Marie Antoinette deal, and they began uprising. And as soon as he realized this was happening, instead of you know addressing it, he he set himself on fire. So I think his time can be summarized by Trooper: We're here for a good time, not for a long time. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on today's history lesson. So far, we've covered ancient Rome, China. We dove into the Mayans, but 
Who else? Comment down below on who or what you want to hear about next. Be it a part two or something entirely different. We love hearing your suggestions. That about we do. You. Yes, throw them all down. Throw any suggestion, even if you're like, hey, get a new turtleneck. We love any of them. I've been yeah. your host, Taylor McWatter. And I've been Ray Mysterio, and we'll see you next time on Bumblebee. Stay sweet bees. Bye.